What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at Aaron Sherry Cask. Stick around. So we're back with another Aaron today, and if you follow this channel, you'll know two things. One is that I love Aaron, and two is that I love Sherry. Now, Aaron, I'll admit I'm a bit of a fanboy. I basically like their entire range. It's almost like they can do no wrong. Uh, my favorite of that range is probably the 18-year-old. The 18-year-old is a very sherried expression from them. So anytime Aaron and Sherry are getting together, that's going to be good news for me. Now, this bottle came out, uh, I think, in 2019. Should have been around the time that they revamped their core range. Now, when they revamped, uh, they kept on a lot of their older expressions. A few of them they either swapped out or tweaked, and they brought out some new ones as well. So this one... Uh, along with another one called Distillery Reserve, were the two new no-age stated expressions that they brought on board. Now, Aaron already has a series of no-age stated expressions on the go. Uh, it's a bunch of wine finishes. They come in at 50%. Uh, you've got a Sauternes in there, an Amarone, a Muscatel. Uh, decent whiskeys, not bad at all, but definitely not the best from Aaron's range. Now, those ones are going to be pretty different than what we're getting here with the Sherry Cask. Uh, number one, this one has a much higher ABV. And number two, much more importantly, this is not a finished whiskey. This was matured entirely in Sherry Hogshead barrels, apparently for seven years. Now you also have the Bothy, or I guess they renamed it the Quarter Cask in 2019. Beautiful, beautiful whiskey. That is another no age stated expression from them, and it is going to be their best one. But that one's the exception, not the rule. I think generally speaking, if you want a good introduction to Aaron, start with the age statements. Anyway, swinging back around to this one, it is one that I got really excited about when I found out it was coming out. You got Aaron, you got Sherry, you got Cast Strength. I mean, really, what could go wrong, right? So, yeah, with that said, why don't we hop into a review of this one, see what it's all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now, we do have an Aaron with us today, so what do you expect? This one comes in at a hefty 55.8%. It is, of course, non-chill filtered and naturally colored. So all the good stuff. So we have a pretty nice, pretty dark color to our whiskey here. Definitely some active casts involved. Now, if you've watched my previous reviews of Aaron's, you'll know that I absolutely love this bottle and nothing's changed. It's minimalist, it's stylish, it's modern. I think it's got a classy, interesting look to it. So my presentation score is still gonna be a solid five out of five. As always, we have good info here. It even tells us about the barrel. So Sherry Hogshead barrel, 250 liters. Of course, non-chill filtered, natural color, all the good stuff. At the end of the day, that is all the info that you need. However, I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent here. I do wish they gave us an age statement because apparently this is approximately seven years old. And Aaron, speaking generally, is a pretty good brand with regards to being honest and transparent with our customers. I would love to see seven right there on the label, just like, you know, something like Ardbeg did with their five-year-old wee beastie. Just an extra step, an extra level of transparency that I think a lot of people would appreciate. But of course, we already have everything we need here. I'm not complaining, I'm just daydreaming. All right, let's try our nose here. Okay, so this is like, it's slightly foosty. Definitely sherry forward, lots of sherry in here, but not so much that it's overwhelmed that sort of intrinsic Aaron character. Sultanas, ginger, dried mango, sawdust. Um, there's a little bit of mint in here, kind of interesting. Um, some red apples and maybe a touch of acetone. So there is a little bit of sharpness to this nose, but generally speaking, it's quite pleasant. Let's try our palette. So bit of an, bit of an alcohol bite up front. Definitely getting that high ABV. Um, sherry is going to be more forward on the palate. Um, it's a little bit tart, a little bit astringent, comes in with like orange peel, dried apricots, um, you do have some green apples in here, some pretty big vanilla and paper. Now for our finish. Mm. Mm, okay, so we're getting a little bit more waxy here, um, coming in on milk chocolate. You got some sawdust in here. You have some tree bark, uh, some green apples, 
There is some spice in here, so a little bit of chili pepper, maybe some star anise, some bitter herbs in there. I'm getting some of that papery note coming back again. Pretty long finish, lingering on pepper and a little bit of heat. Interesting whiskey here. It's not exactly what I was expecting. I think I was expecting more of a sherry bomb. So something along the lines of like Abelard Abana, Glen Farkless 105, just one of those super intense, dark, really dense, powerful whiskeys. Now, of course, this is deeply sherried. It's got a great intensity to it, 55.8% ABV. You're not gonna be disappointed if you want an intense sherried whiskey. It's just maybe a little bit less hardcore than I was expecting it to be. Of course, this is a sherry forward, powerful whiskey, and if you're signing up for big flavors, you are definitely getting them here. But personally speaking, it's not what I was hoping it would be. Uh, of course, that's pretty much on me. I expect so much from Aaron. Like I said, it is one of my favorite distilleries. Now, I genuinely thought I would immediately fall in love with this whiskey, and that just didn't happen. Um, it is a good whiskey, but I don't think it's a great whiskey. I'm gonna give this one a score of 84. It just wasn't what I was hoping for. Now, I do actually think this is one of the weaker core range errands out there. It is better than those wine cask finishes that I mentioned earlier, but not by much. Now, this just didn't come together in the way I was hoping, and there's a few reasons for that. Now, while I do think this is a generally pretty well-composed whiskey, I don't think it has that clean, elegant structure that I've come to expect from Aaron. It's a little bit more coarse, not quite as sophisticated. And beyond that, you do get a little bit of heat with this. Certainly the heat gets better if you add a little bit of water, let it sit in the glass, it'll round out with time, but it's unfortunate that that's needed. Now this heat, it's not over the top, it's not unbearable, but it's certainly not adding anything to the whiskey. So I just find this to be one of the more technically flawed errands out there. Beyond that, I do get a bit of a papery note in here, which I tend to associate with youth. I find myself wishing that they just went for a full on sherry bomb with this one. I mean, yeah, just have that cask completely overwhelm the errand, completely overwhelm the youth, and just give us those deep, dark, rich, intense flavors, like an Abelard Abana, for example. Yes, that is a cop out, but it works and it's fun. And if you're not going for the sherry bomb, then I would suggest something that allows the Aaron DNA to talk a little bit more. I think part of the issue that I take with this whiskey is that while it's not a sherry bomb, it is very sherry forward, so much so that it kind of overshadows or muddies some of those brighter, cleaner, more vibrant elements of the Aaron DNA. Now, I realize this is a totally unfair comparison, but I do have a bottle of the 18 on the go, and that one is such a beautiful whiskey. It really illustrates what can be done with Aaron and Sherry. The Sherry in that one is so deep, dark, rich, complex, and then you still have those bright, vibrant Aaron notes, and they work perfectly together. And of course, completely different category of whiskey. This one's a no age stated expression, um, much cheaper, but still, it can be done. Everything that works in the 18 for me doesn't work in this one. Now, of course, this is all subjective and tell you what, maybe you shouldn't listen to me because it does seem like the consensus in the whiskey community is that this is a great bottle. Now, I've spent a lot of time with this bottle. I've tried to see what other people see in it and I'm just not quite there. I do realize I'm coming off particularly harsh on this one and that's just because I expect so much from Aaron. I think they're such a good distillery. They're capable of amazing things and this one just left me a little bit wanting. At the end of the day, it still is a really nice whiskey good flavors in here, good intensity, and I think a lot of you out there won't be quite as disappointed as I am. Now in terms of value, I'm still not in love with this one. I do think it's overpriced. Uh, when it first came out here in Taiwan a couple years back, the price was through the roof. I guess it was a really hyped up whiskey. Since then, it has calmed down a little bit, but I still think it's too high. You can get an Abelar Abana for cheaper than this here in Taiwan if it's on sale. Much better deal. Otherwise, if you're not stuck on cast strength, go for Edredor Caledonia, go for one of the darker 12-year-old Glenallachie 12s. There's a lot of better sherried options out there in my opinion. Staying within the Aaron brand itself, I still think there's much better options out there. If you want those bright, clean, vibrant notes that you get with the Aaron distillate, go for the quarter cask or go for the 10-year-old. Beautiful, beautiful whiskeys. Or if you want Aaron with a bit of sherry, go for the 18. The 18 is a much better whiskey. Yes, it is more expensive, but it is worth the extra money. For something like this, I think a lot of you might like it more than me. It is a decent whiskey, but personally speaking, it's not one I'll be coming back to anytime soon. All right, that'll be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. And I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried Aaron Sherry Cask? What were your thoughts on it? Did you like it more than me? 
Finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.